Plutonians, welcome back to another Diablo 4 update video. Raw hide is buffed. And then along with a lot of other things, but most importantly, all of you grinders out there that have been masterworking and you are running short on Rawhide, it is here. Let's hop into some of the changes that are going to be hitting on the patch that's coming out in two days. There's a whole lot going on. Uh, we're going to start with just a couple of the big fixes and some of the quality of life that they're actually adding in, which is really, really cool to see. Uh, this one right here is amazing, and I actually didn't realize this. Somebody in chat hopped in and told me about it. You can actually swap your runes and your gems without going to the jeweler. Finally. All you do is here in game. Let me just show you exactly what this looks like. When you're in game, you just go here. You go to your jewel. You can just take this and swap it in. And it's done. It's so nice. Um, so you're going to have to figure out a little bit ways of working through it. You just keep on replacing the gems until it goes in the order that you want but it starts at the top and then it pushes them down and down and down and that's how you update your gems you can do the same thing for runes so if i wanted to swap in some of the runes here instead of running the town rune here i can put the y'all in and it replaces it for me and then i just swap it right back in huge 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 quality of life change this is really really going to make things much easier no trips to the jeweler again so with that, they're also going to add in some tool tips that are indicate that you have to temper twice in order to do your master working. That's big because that there's nothing saying it. A lot of people have come in and asked, why can't I master work my gear? And that is the reason why. So that's going to be really, really nice. They are making a huge change, which hopefully this is actually going to reduce some of the server lag. They're changing around the way the damage numbers look. This is actually the way that they kind of look back in Diablo 3. So they're reverting back to damage numbers like that. You're not going to see massive, gigantic numbers that are going to pop up across your screen that are going to say things like 23 billion. You won't see any of this anymore. What you're going to see now is it's going to be changed. The combat texts are now going to be abbreviated. So instead of saying 10,000 damage, it's going to say 10K damage. So those big numbers that you're seeing here are going to be in Ks and then B's and Q's and T's anymore. So it's going to be a huge change that hopefully is going to reduce some of the lag in the parties and on your game console. So this way, you're just seeing a very abbreviated number instead of these massive numbers filling up the entire screen. We'll see how it works when it goes into, into practice, but that is what is going to be changing for damage numbers. And this one right here is where the buff to your raw hides are fixed an issue where fewer automatically granted materials were received in higher difficulties so they were less than intended so the stuff that was dropping that was automatically being converted because that was something that changed this season was they take automatically convert anything that is yellow blue that wasn't legendary and is getting automatically converted into crafting materials so those crafting materials now are getting done as intended so something else that is a huge sticking point for a lot of people uh we're finally going to get it but we're going to be getting the Echo of Lilith Spark. Players that have already defeated the Echo of Lilith this season will be rewarded with a resplendent spark soon after logging in once the patch is live. So if you guys have not yet got get your kills in, if you need help with kills, in the description of this video is going to be the link for our Discord server. Hop into Discord. We have a ton of people there that are more than willing to help. We can teach you how to do the fight if you want to learn it on your own. So hop in, join the server. It is a great community. We're running events for people, helping people with trading the works. The link is in the description of this video. Next up, we have the Season of Hatred Rising. They are making some changes. Finally, the Realm Walker event has potential to be really, really fun, but it is just slow. Uh, what they're doing is that they're going to be speeding it up now. So the... Realm Walker no longer reduces the spawns if only one person is following it, which is nice. So you're going to have a lot, of, a lot more monsters to kill, a lot more experience as you're going. Increased max spawns allowed at a time to 20, previously 15, so more monsters are going to be spawning. Increased the base movement speed of the Realm Walkers by around 15%, so they're going to walk faster. Finally get to their destination much faster than they were before. Every time that you kill a wave of the Bloodhound Guardians, the Realm Walker in movement speed is going to get increased by 10%. So when it pops up with all of the little things that are spawning around, you have the big gigantic guardians that are linked to him. When you kill them, you get 10% more 
movement speed, so you're going to get to that destination faster. Uh, if you kill all three waves of the Guardians, the Realm Walker is going to move 30% faster in addition to that base. So that means that you're going to get 45% increased movement from that walker. So they're almost cutting down the time of the Realm Walkers by half, which is which is a great change because it was just taking so long to get to the end point. We just we were just like staggering through, waiting to get into the portal to get our seething opals. So this is going to be a big change. The Realm Walker now has a low chance to summon some treasure goblins, which is going to be fun. You'll get a little bit more loot, some more boss materials. This right here, when I first started, actually, I actually ran to the wrong place when the game first launched. They're removing the Hatred Rising icon from the map. That is the one that is in green that shows the Realm Walker is going to be spawning. They're going to only have the event icon. So I ran right to where it said the Realm Walker was going to be spawning. I waited for 10 minutes. The icon disappeared, and then there was no Realm Walker. And that is because it, it, the icon for the event is actually where it spawns. So I had to run all the way to the event, so they're changing that too. So this is going to be a really, really nice change here. Then they finished up with just a couple miscellaneous changes to make the event progress quicker, which is really, really nice here. Next thing we got for everybody is Mythic Uniques are getting buffed. Now, it is not all about damage. In these Mythic Uniques buffs, they're taking your all stats. If you look at your character stat sheet on the Paragon board, it requires some pretty hefty numbers. One of them was like 2,000 plus for your main stat, which on a class with only one weapon like Spiritborn is a very hefty number to hit. What they're doing is they're taking most of the all stats, like your Doombringer here, or your, and then they're also changing the life. Like If you look at the Grandfather's life, it is getting almost tripled. So they're, they're really trying to buff the survivability of people that are using the Mythic Uniques so that they really feel a benefit of it. So life is getting increased on most items by almost three, and then your all stats is getting pretty big buffs around for that. This should be retroactive. All of the Mythic Uniques that you found, they probably will not make them legacy items. They probably will just update everything across the board. So your Mythic Uniques should be safe. Don't quote me, but that's how they did it the last time that they did a buff for the Mythic Uniques. For anybody that is leveling and all, this is just a really quick side note right here. The tempering or the elemental surge tempering affixes has been increased. So that's the base damage. So when you hit make an alt, if you actually want to level it and you don't want to get power leveled, you can temper the elemental surge affixes onto your weapons. And it is by far like world's difference between the damage that you actually do First, when this temper goes off, it is like 10, sometimes 100 times more damage with the temper. So you put it on and then your character, as soon as it procs, everything dies. It is, it's, it's a good change. So this is going to be an increase to your alt leveling uh, when we get there. When you start the season off, you don't have the temper, so you won't notice this increase. But when you get all your legendary tempers going, this is going to be awesome. Next thing that we have here, uh, just a couple miscellaneous things that have been fixed. They've increased the number of scrolls of restoration that are come from the weekly um, Citadel. Now, if you guys have been playing the Infernal Hordes, all you need to do is Infernal Hordes. You get more tempering restoration scrolls than you possibly could use. So there's a ton of them. If you spam the Infernal Hordes, you don't have to worry about it too much. If you're looking for how in the world you get Infernal Horde keys, I have a video that I made. It's this one right here on my YouTube page. Uh, at the end game how to level 60. Now what? This comes along with a whole document on what to do when you hit level 60. It has an A to B priority list. Uh, you can go down the priority list. This is how I built my characters. It has a list of all of the materials, where they drop from, all the end game activities, what drops from each of those, and then what to do. It comes with a sheet that gives you a list of everything that you're gonna need to know when you hit 60. It has an A all the way down to F of a priority list, uh, what quest to complete, where to get everything that you're going to need to make your character successful. It has all of the crafting materials that are very rare that you need to know where to get. All of the dungeons and all of the events and stuff that we're going to be able to do when you unlock level 60 and all of your endgame content. What drops where. So if you haven't yet, make sure you go check out that video. It is very, very helpful when I have something that gives me a list by list thing when I'm trying to finish up a character. A couple things that they're doing now, they're bringing back all of the items that they turned off at the launch here so we're finally going to get the shroud of false death when we were playing on the ptr 
we got to test out this item. And at first I was like, you know what? I really am not going to like this at all. I don't even know why they bothered putting this in. Uh, but what this does is that it I gives you this, this right this. here. It gives you stealth. So now you're just, you don't even need to attack. It is so much fun. This is going to change, I'm sure. But it's coming back. You can be stealth on any single class ever. So if you love playing a rogue class or you love being stealthy and just sneaking up on things, it's coming back into the game. Save your sparks. Craft it. The Perost Undercity is getting buffed too. They're going to be increasing the amount of drops that are coming from the Cross Undercity. If you have ever done one without a tribute, you get to the end, you fly through this dungeon, you finally finish it, and you're like, well, that was it. Why would I even bother doing this? Now, make sure that you're running with tributes because that is really the only way to do it. If you do not have any tributes, I covered all of that in this video, and then I also covered it here. Um, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you finish the Deeds of the Champion quest. If you don't finish this, you will not get tributes. So make sure that that is something that you have completed before or else you will not get your tributes. And the tributes are the only way to do the Karas under City. Do them with a party because everybody gets the rewards so you guys can share and optimize all of your tributes. If four people have tributes, one each, then you can still get the benefits from all of those. They have to specifically state that is for the entire party and not like the mythic ones. The mythic ones are specifically for the person that uses it. So make sure that you're using ones that benefit the whole party when you go and do these. That's all the updates I got for you today. I'm live on YouTube and Twitch every single night. Stop by, say hi, theorycraft with me. Catch you on the clip side.